After this, they start discussing what obituary would best suit the late Abel Merriweather. Mr. Henry Slater suggests a rhyming couplet as obituary. He suggests these two extremely funny lines. Despised and forgotten by some you may be, but the spot that contains you is sacred to me. He argues that the grammatical error in the lines can be overlooked as poetic license. Poetic license is the freedom a poet or writer has to change normal rules of language. In this case, the word we is used instead of us to rhyme with be. Elizabeth Slater dismisses his poetry, saying that it will take up more space in the newspaper and hence cost more money. Next, they suspect that Meriwether has not paid his insurance money that morning and has wasted his time at the ring o' bells. Immediately, they stop pretending to mourn the death of late Abel Meriwether. We get a glimpse of their true feelings for him and their mean nature when they start abusing and cursing him. Meanwhile, Victoria comes running into the room startled. She informs them that she just saw Abel Merriweather getting up from his bed. The adults refuse to believe her till they see Merriweather entering the room with twinkling eyes. The Slater and the Jordans are completely taken aback and Mrs. Slater even touches him to make sure that she is not mistaken. The 70-year-old Abel is surprised and irritated at how his family is behaving with him. Henry Slater, as we know, is now wearing Abel Merriweather's slippers, thinking that he's dead. Merriweather notices his slippers on Henry and demands them back. He further wishes to know why everyone is in mourning dresses. Mrs. Slater tries to cover up for the misunderstanding, saying that one of Ben Jordan's relatives has passed away, so they are mourning in black clothes. It is clear to us that Mr. Merriweather is in the pink of health as he drinks tea and eats his pie heartily. Soon afterwards, he scolds Mrs. Slater for removing the bureau and the clock from his room. The Slater's secret is now out in the open. The Jordans make full use of the opportunity to turn the situation to their advantage. Elizabeth pretends to be very concerned about her father and informs Meriwether that the Slaters have been robbing him. In their blame game, they stop hiding their serious mistake. Elizabeth Jordan goes a step further and reveals that the Slaters had considered him death and arranged for a mourning. Abel Merriweather now understands why they are all dressed in black. It does not slip his notice that the Jordans and the Slaters have started dividing his property and belongings among them as soon as they thought him dead. He quickly understands their intention and declares that he will now change his will. He tests them by saying that his share of property will go to whichever family he's staying with at the time of his death. The Jordans and the Slaters fall into this trap. The Slaters try to hold him back in their house and the Jordans wish him to shift to their place. It is clear to Abel that his two daughters and their husbands are only attached to him for his money. He declares that he will do three things that very day. He will visit his lawyer and change his will. He will pay his premium at the insurance office. And finally, he will get married at St. Philip's Church. The last part of this declaration shocks the Slaters and the Jordans. They almost forget their devastation at being left out of Abel Merriweather's will. Mr. Merriweather, who is a fun-loving, straightforward and strict man, increases their disappointment by inviting them to his wedding. He will get married to Mrs. John Sherrox, housekeeper of Ringo Bells, at 12 o'clock next Monday in St. Philip's Church. He sarcastically thanks Amelia Slater for removing the bureau from his room and bringing it downstairs while he was sleeping. The bureau contains his will and it will now be now easier for him to carry it to the insurance office. 
With that, we reach the end of Houghton's play, which shows us the true picture of the British society during Houghton's times. Many times we have similar situations in Indian society where children refuse to take care of their parents and are only interested in the money and property that the parents leave behind. Mr. Abel Merriweather's decision at the end of the play serves as a moral lesson to the society driven by greed and self-interest. So students, take a lesson and always be caring, loving and respectful to your family, no matter what you have to gain from them. We will meet soon in our recap and question and answer videos on The Dear Departed. Till then, goodbye.